Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we'll be talking about a medication which might be released in 2020. It's called Balovapsan. Many families have been asking me if I can give some information about Balovapsan and I've been telling them in person, but now we're talking about all this here on the slides. I'm gonna explain in details what is Balovaptan and what it's used for. And is Balovaptan a treatment for autism? Yes or no? We're gonna check now. Balovaptan is under the developmental code name RG7314. It is a molecule, it's a selective, small molecule antagonist of the vasopressin V1A receptor, which is under development now by a company called Roche for the treatment of autism. We're gonna talk later about what is vasopressin and what is vasopressin V1A. As of August 2019 and until now, they are still in the Phase three clinical trials on adults and phase two clinical trials on children. What does it mean phase two and phase three? We're gonna explain later on the slides. And in January 29th, 2018, Roche announced that the FDA, the US FDA have granted them to design Balovaptan in individuals with autism spectrum as a treatment. After they have, after Roche have, did some studies on Balovaptan on phase two trials in autism men adults, and it's called vanilla. Vanilla vasopressin antagonist to improve, to improve social communication in autism. It's only about social communication. So it's not a treatment for autism, but it's only to improve the social communication and interaction in people or in children with autism and the vanilla was done the study was done on adults adults from united states from different parts of the united states and it showed that some of the adults had improved their social skills so let's talk about what does it mean clinical trials and later we're going to talk about the receptor which is v1a receptor of vasopressin First of all, if, we, if any company would like to release a medication inside the market, they have to take the FDA approval. And to get the approval, they have to pass through many steps. Clinical trials, it's divided into two phases, this phase and this phase. First of all, they take the medication and they study it in the lab. After that, when they have a structure, a chemical structure, they go and they test it on the pets or the animals in the lab. So when they have some studies on this, they go to the clinical trials. And the clinical trials phases are four phases. Phase zero, when they do the test, on a person to check the metabolism of the drug in the body. When they have a view of what, how the drug is metabolized, they go on phase one. Phase one, they take a small group of people, like 20, 10 to 20 people, and they check what happens if we give them this medication. And if the medication passes the positive results, then they go on phase two and they try this medication or this structure, chemical structure on a larger group as to like 40 or 50 people. If they see results, if they get the results from these uh, people, so they go on the final stage, which is phase, th phase three, and they try this chemical structure on thousands, more than a thousand. And after that, when they have positive results, they go into licensing of this medication. So now, nowadays, Roche company is doing a clinical trial on children on phase two who are autistic and on phase three adults with autism. And what I can say is that they are trying to push 
and get the results for communication only, not regarding other issues connected to autism. We talked about the phases of clinical trials and that rush is in phase two on kids and phase three on adults. Let's go to vasopressin. Vasopressin, it's a hormone which is called an antidiuretic hormone, which means that it blocks water to get out from the body. And this hormone is usually synthesized or made in the neurons of the hypothalamus in our brains. And then it travels to the posterior pituitary gland where it is released when the body gives information to the brain that I'm leaking fluids. So in this case, the pituitary gland releases the vasopressin from the vesicles into the blood circulation. And then this hormone goes all over the body. So what it does to protect us as an antidiuretic hormone when our bodies is losing extra cell fluids. It has three functions. It functions, first of all, on the kidneys, on V2 receptors, and it increases the reabsorption of water from getting out from the body through the kidneys, and it pulls it back inside the circulation, so we have more fluids in our bodies. Second of all, an action on the V1 receptor, which constricts the arterioles and increasing peripheral vascular resistance by increasing blood or raising, uh, sorry, increasing fluids and raising uh, arterial blood pressure. In this case, vasopressin, it protects us from losing fluids and from lowering our blood pressure in some cases by activating V2 receptors on the kidneys and the V1 receptors on the arterioles or the vessels. Also, it has an action on a V1A receptor in the brain cortex where the hypothalamus does not only release vasopressin into the circulation, but also it releases in the brain cells and when it is released in brain cells, it causes an important role in social aggress aggressiveness. So the people, when they have high vasopressin in their brains, they are aggressive, they are not social. But one issue is that it increases the motivation of pairing or sexual act in men and mater maternal response for stress in women. So we talked about vasopressin, and the V1A receptor that causes aggression in the brain. And also we talked about the phases of clinical trials. And now let's talk about vasopressin again. Vasopressin is divided into V1, V2, V3, just to remind you on which, on which receptor we are working. And then V1 is divided into V1A and V1B. V1A acts on the brain. What happened is, let's suppose that vasopressin V1A receptor is here. And vasopressin, it stimulates its receptor to produce aggression in our brains and poor social skills. So what happens now, vasopressin activates V1A receptor. If we add, according to the Roche company, if we add baloveptan as a V1 receptor selective re receptor antagonist, so it blocks this one, what happens? We will have a vasopressin receptor V1A receptor, and we will have a blockage of this receptor. Now what happens? Vasopressin is no longer is able to activate this receptor in order to cause aggression. So it causes relaxation and better social skills. This is the study, this is how it works. And if it lowers aggression and improves social skills, it's according to Roche studies. And also there's a study in May 2001, researchers 
found out that vasopressin not only reabsorbs water to the circulation through V2 receptors on the kidneys, it also absorbs water in the brain cortex via V1A receptors. So if we give a V1A receptor blocker or antagonist, it means that we are blocking the absorption of water to the cortex. In this case, we may have less brain inflammation and less seizures. This is why they weren't on this molecule. But this is true in autism individuals if they have high vasopressin. What happens if these individuals have low levels of vasopressin? We don't know. They only are working on kids who have or, or people who have high vasopressin levels. But if my child has low vasopressin levels, I don't know. Perfect. If it's under development structure, truly improves our kids with social skills. This is really good news. But it's not a treatment and a cure because it's only improving social skills. So what about families who are concerned about speech, communication, interaction, awareness, hyperactivity? Uh, and also, what about academic skills? These kids lack academic skills because they have sometimes poor muscle tones and other motor skills deficiencies. So until now, until more information about Balobaptan, our kids are really facing unknown fate. So Balobaptan, in two words, it only improves communication skills uh, in adults in phase three trials, and it's in kids on phase two trials. Until it's approved by the FDA, I'll keep you posted and updated. Thank you so much for following.